Implicature is about what we expect when someone says something. So it's an inference that might not always be true, but based on our understandings of conversational norms and what people mean to say, we believe that it's likely true. So there's uh, some types of implicature called scalar implicature, conventional implicature, kind of push these together and just talk about it generally. So imagine that you hear someone say, that was a good meal. Now, what you can infer from this statement is that you might think that if someone says that was a good meal, that means that not that was not a great meal. Because typically if we say something is good, we expect it to be at that level and no higher. If it were to be a great meal, then we would say that it's a great meal. But because we didn't say it's great, we just said it's good, we believe that it's not great. Or if someone says, I have some answers, the implication there is that I do not have all the answers. But it could be that they do have all the answers, but we expect them not to have all the answers because when someone says, I have some, the expectation is that if they did have all of them, they would have said that they had all of them but they didn't say that, so we assume that what they're saying is the truth, they only have some, and that they don't have every single answer there. So this is different from entailment, because in entailment, it has to logically follow and always be true. But uh, there are some things that we can say, like that was a good meal. In fact, it was the best meal I've ever had. So the implicature that we're expecting might not always be true in the real world. And there's a couple tests that we can use for this. The first test is called the defeasibility test. And what we say is that if A is implying B, then we can cancel B. So what this means is that we can do essentially the A and not B test. So A and not B test. And when we do the A and not B test, we're not going to get a contradiction like we would with entailment. So instead, we can say for this one, that was a good meal, and then we can put the words in fact, and now we need to take the negation of B. So that was not a great meal. So the negation of that would be that was a great meal. So we can say that was a good meal. In fact, that was a great meal. So we're canceling our implicature, essentially, and saying that the opposite of our implicature is true. And because this is still a valid sentence, we're, look, we're likely looking at an implicature here and not an entailment. So this is a good test that we can use in order to check to see if we have implicatures. What we can also do is we can do something called the reinforcement test. So this is when we reinforce our implicature. We basically state our implicature out loud. So again, these are inferences that people make. So if someone says that was a good meal, you could reinforce the expectation by explicitly stating that implicature. So you can think of this as being like the A and B test. So in this case, we could say that was a good meal. And then you could follow it up by saying uh, it wasn't a great meal. So that was a good meal. Maybe we can use the word but here to make it sound better. That was a good meal, but it wasn't a great meal. So here we're reinforcing, we're just stringing A and B back to back. And this doesn't sound redundant. If you do this with entailments, you get a sentence that sounds quite redundant. But in this case, we're still clarifying that information. That was a good meal. And by the way, your expectations are correct. That was not a great meal. That's why I said it was just good. So this is the second test that you can use, and typically these would be used in tandem to show that something can be reinforced and canceled. So the defeasibility and reinforcement tests are our babies when it comes to dealing with implicatures. Uh, one thing that we do see as a result of implicature are things like metaphor. So uh, again, when we're talking about implicature, we're talking about non-literal statements. This is what we expect. So if someone were to say, 
His heart was made of steel. We know that this isn't a literal statement. Her heart is not literally made of steel. But we know what they're trying to say here. What they're trying to say is that her heart is immovable, which, by the way, is another metaphor. So you could say that uh, she is strong and uh, stubborn with her emotions or something like that. Maybe stability is a better word. Sometimes it's hard to give an exact definition of what we mean by a metaphor because it's something that we still understand. But this is another example of an implicature. You hear her heart was made of steel, and there's an expectation of what that means. Here's another one that's a little bit more creative. His mind is an empty jar. Now, there's actually a couple ways that you could take this. The most expected way would to be saying, like, uh, he's stupid because his mind is empty. It's like an empty jar. Or maybe if you're being really creative, you might think of this as a positive statement. As his mind has lots of room to absorb new knowledge. And when he learns it, he stores it well. Now, uh, the first one is what you'd expect. The second one is what you'd say uh, when you accidentally call someone stupid over a text message and they find out and you're like, hold on, I need to make this uh, look a little bit better. But uh, in either case, we can reinforce or uh, cancel these. So his mind is an empty jar, but he's not stupid. Uh, her heart was made of steel, but she's not always strong and stubborn with her emotions. So these can still be canceled and they can be reinforced just as you'd expect them to be able to be reinforced. Now, the last one I want to talk about is uh, conjunctions and time. So these are when you have two events or descriptions, usually events, and you string them together with the word and. Now, logically, these are just two events that happened. But there's an expectation that when you say sentences and say events in a certain order, that's also the order that they occur in. So if someone says, Sue got married and pregnant, what you expect is that Sue got married, then he got pregnant. So this is an expectation based on conversational norms. Now you can imagine if we change the sentence a little bit. So maybe you can hear it when we change the sentence. Uh, Sue got pregnant and married. So the expectation here is if you say she got pregnant and married, uh, people would be assuming, just based on expectations of how we talk and communicate with each other, that Sue got pregnant, then got married. But again, we can use the feasibility on this. Sue got married and pregnant, but uh, she got pregnant first and then got married. Sue got pregnant and married, but she did get married first. Or again, we can reinforce them. So this is a quick and dirty introduction to implicature. Again, the course is titled Semantics on YouTube, so we're not staying too much in this ballpark. This is more on the pragmatic side. But when we talk about inferences, we want to cover entailment, implicature, and presupposition. So we'll talk about presupposition in the next video. If you have any questions, you know what to do. And I appreciate you for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, all that fun stuff. See you in the next one.